to close off Walrus Appreciation Week, I thought it would be fun to do a quick overview of how this clade is doing in Chimere. In short, fantastic. On Earth in the mid to late Miocene into the Pliocene, walruses dominated the North Pacific. Many species occupying a range of niches could be found. Although associated with polar ice today, for most of their evolutionary history, walruses were tropical to temperate animals. Unfortunately, we are forced to speculate on how and why many of the niches and ranges once occupied by walruses are now taken by the likes of sea lions and fur seals. As the last two million years of marine fossils in the region are notoriously poor, due in part to the swaying sea level shifts in the ice ages, but it seems that a generalist diet of the eared seals gave them an edge, as so often happens in times of contextual change. In Chimere, the story is quite different. Much like sloths, luck was on the side of the walruses. Many species were brought to Chimere during the late Miocene harvest, when Chimere's climate and ecosystem had many analogs to their own, and walruses quickly proliferated. Over a dozen species are found in the known world and beyond. Some retained a fairly basal body plan. One group, called the sea badgers, share many convergent traits with sea lions and fur seals, being generalist piscivores and hunters. Due to their greater intelligence and aggression, these pinnipeds are a large reason why there is only one genus of eared seal in the known world, and one relegated to a few small northern populations. The common sea badger of the known world is about 400 pounds, while their giant cousin on the polar continent are more than twice this size. They are surprisingly proficient on land, which is most useful in defending their resting sites from terrestrial predators. Another fairly basal walrus is the Kuratuk. These are massive generalists, weighing up to two tons. Although they look quite like the famous Pontolus, these giants are from a more basal lineage and tend to prefer crustaceans over fish and marine mammals, although tree seals are sometimes hunted. A small resident population is found on the southern islands, but they are most common in Kaishel, the great polar continent to the south. Many Kurutuk of Kaishel migrate to the known world during the winters to breed on the southern shores of Picardia. Several tusked species can be found in the inland sea harvesting mollusks from the seagrass meadows. Most common is the Burgu, a four-tusked Gomphotarid. Although not particularly close to the walrus species we have here on Earth, they have convergently evolved a similar vaulted palate for easy processing of their mollusk prey. Like the sea badger, they have a giant cousin in the south. At four to five tons, the Shuaklu is the largest walrus ever to evolve on Earth or Chimere. With thick skin insulated by blubber and four ferocious tusks, healthy bulls of this species have little to fear from most predators on land or sea. They feed on giant worms and mollusks in the rich kelp forests of Kaishel's coastal waters. And like many walrus species from the polar continent, a few will spend the cold winters up in the known world, although a thick layer of blubber enables them to remain in their preferred habitat year-round. As happens with many clades, the success and diversity of walruses in Chimere underscores the importance of context in determining survival or extinction. Traits can mean success in one world, and spell devastation in another. That's all for today. Lots to do in little time. Cheers, folks!